quarter past two on Sunday. It's the Merseyside derby, guys. And I'm telling you now, I am looking forward to it so, so much. Why? Because it's the Merseyside derby. I've just said it. It's the Merseyside derby. If you're not looking forward to this, are you really a Liverpool fan? Now, don't get me wrong, I'm also a little bit nervous. Yes, Everton have not been on the very best run of form since the start of the season, since they had Ronald Koeman, since he got sacked and it was Unsworth in charge and now Sam Allardyce is in charge. I think he's got three wins on the bounce in total. Maybe two wins and then they had another win. I think the West Ham victory, the 4-0 victory that they had was still under Unsworth at the time. But even so... They have put some wins together themselves. Now, Liverpool, on the other hand, have also put some epic wins together, sealing their place into the knockout round of the Champions League in hellish fashion, winning 7-0 in the Champions League. And that was brilliant. In our last two games, that Champions League game and the Premier League game included, we've scored 12 goals. That's no mean feat. That's no mean feat. Now, you can say all day long about the competition that we've come up against. And I think it was obviously Brighton and who did we even face in the Champions League? I cannot even remember right now. I really can't. It's not Maribor. It was Spartak Moscow. That's who it was. Spartak Moscow. Okay? So you can say all day long, but regardless of any of that, we scored 12 goals and in both of those games, we only, we only conceded one goal out of those two games. We've been doing very, very well. I have to say, in an attacking sense, and we're not doing too bad defensively. Now, obviously, defence is always going to be one of my bugbears with Liverpool. It's just, and it, not just mine, probably every Liverpool fans as well. We haven't addressed that centre-back situation and stuff like that. At the moment, though, we are looking pretty good. Now, we have to come to the Merseyside derby because this is what I'm talking about right now. Everton look like they're starting to find a little bit of form. Liverpool look ferocious. They look attacking like one of the best teams in the league. Obviously, Man City are above us in that sense for sure. We're looking like one of the better teams, though, in terms of attacking. However, when it comes to a derby, and I'm pretty sure everybody can say this, whether it's a London derby, a North London derby, whatever, Merseyside derby, anything, could be anywhere. Form goes out the window. What you've done in previous games goes out the window. And the only thing that matters is on that day, it's the Merseyside derby. It's Liverpool versus Everton. It's at Anfield. Anfield has been a rock for Liverpool. I think someone said it best. It's been like a cauldron for Liverpool where we can take our opponents. I cannot remember the last time that we lost there. But we take our opponents... And with the power of the fans, we can do wonderful things. And that team can do wonderful things as well. Now, let's get into a little bit of team news in terms of Liverpool. Now, Liverpool do apparently have Lalana back in training. That is very good news because I've been waiting to see the guy for a long time. Made a little bit of a cameo appearance last month, but not much more since then. In fact, nothing since then, I don't think. And do bear, me, bear with me ever so slightly. I am struggling with a sore throat. But I want to get this video done. Coutinho apparently did miss training today. But that doesn't necessarily mean anything. He may have just had a little bit more rest than some of the other players. So there's no injury news right there just yet. It just means that he didn't take part in training. So let's not panic on that front just as of yet. Now, obviously, we're going to be missing Joel Matip. We're going to be missing Nathaniel Klein, obviously. Other than that, from what we can tell, or from what I've seen, and this basically all comes from the This Is Anfield um, Twitter account and their website as well, and their app, in terms of the team news that I've just got there. And generally, they're pretty damn reliable, so I'm going to take their words for it in general. Anything else, player-wise, we seem to be doing okay. Full bills of health all round. Looking ahead ever so slightly in terms of what we can do in team selection. The games after this is West Brom and somebody else in 14th. Bournemouth. Bournemouth. So we've got West Brom and Bournemouth. So what we could do right now, in my opinion, apart from Carriers, because obviously Carriers generally is playing in the 
Champions League isn't really featuring in the Premier League at all. That's Mignolet's space right there. Mignolet would come in goal, but the rest of the team would pretty much stay the same that we fielded against Spartak Moscow. That is what I would do. Because then, I'm not taking lightly West Brom, and I'm certainly not taking lightly Bournemouth, because both teams can cause you troubles in different ways. But this is Merseyside Derby, and we should field the strongest eleven that we can. Now, obviously, since the Champions League game, and obviously during the Champions League game that we had at the week, uh, in the week, yeah. oh my God, words, would you come out, please? Right, in midweek, obviously Alberto Moreno did get injured. Now, it still isn't very clear how severe that injury actually is. But, we've got ample cover. Andrew Robertson, James Milner. And Milner put in a hell of a performance when he came off the bench. Now, he obviously, left back isn't his preferred area. But, he came on and made three assists. A left back made three assists. Now, I think there was the left back from PSG scored a hat-trick or something a couple of months ago. But, that's pretty astounding to have someone who isn't a designated left back come in play left back and absolute and that assist he got for Mane's goal as well where he almost burst the net that was unbelievable that was excellent I would that is the exact team that I would go for and I'll run you through it right now Minule it'd be Robertson at left back <coughs> Clavan Lovren I think was it Clavan and Lovren I think it was Clavan and Lovren Lovren got sub late on um you go Gomez or Trent Alexander-Arnold, either or. I am not bothered either way. If I was going to line up the defence the way I wanted it to be lined up, I would line it up with Joe Gomez and Lovren or Joe Gomez and Clavan. And then I'd have Alexander-Arnold at right back. But in terms of rotation, they might want to rest one of Joe Gomez or Alexander-Arnold. So let's, for this instance, go with Clavan, Lovren and... Joe Gomez, because he seems like he's in hellish form at the moment. He's looking really, really good. Not saying that Alexander-Arnold isn't. Just think that Joe Gomez is doing it right now, both at right-back and centre-back. Then we get into the midfield. And in my opinion, Klopp's already said it, 100% Jordan Henderson will be starting this game. He said he's going to be starting the next game, and the next game that's coming up is the Merseyside Derby. Now, in my opinion, I don't know. I probably I wouldn't have I would have maybe brought him back in for West Brom just because I think there's no nobody in that midfield that played in the Champions League did anything wrong to warrant being taken out. That's just my opinion, and my opinion alone it might be. That's just that's just how I feel. Um, I think when you had uh, was it Emre Can, Wayne Alderman, Coutinho in that midfield, I th that was great. I thought it was fantastic. Um, I thought Coutinho did a good job when he was while he was captain before Milner came on. I thought he did a great job. I really, really did. Um, but hey, that's how it's going to go. So I imagine you're going to get one of Wijnaldum and Emre Chan come out of the team. Unless there's a change of system. Now I'm playing this as if we're going with a straight 4-3-3. That's just me, how I'm going for it. Obviously, I can't predict what sort of system he's going to go with. So, you know, let's just go. I'm going to go with the 4-3-3 for now. Hey, who do you take out? I think... Most media pundits and stuff like that were giving Wayne Alden more plaudits than Emre Chan. Um, so on that basis, I would say Emre Chan would be the one that drops out and Henderson comes in. If I if I had the choice, Henderson wouldn't he wouldn't be he'd be on the bench and it'd be Emre Chan, Wayne Alden, and Coutinho. But we know that Henderson's going to be starting unless he gets injured. Uh, I certainly don't hope he gets injured at all. Not like some people who were really really happy about Henderson not starting the other night and he was on the bench. That's you know. I know Henderson hasn't played very well. He has not played very well. We all know that. But to be really, really happy and cheering and everything like that, that he wasn't that our club captain, whatever you think about him, of being captain and stuff like that, not on. I, that's just my opinion. I just don't think that's on. We should support, support every player that plays for Liverpool while they play for Liverpool until the last day that they play for Liverpool. I just think that's how it is. Unless they do something completely unspeakable, you know, or completely disgusting or something like that, whatever. You should support them through and through. Anyway, got that off my chest. I wish I could get this cold off my chest. Anyway, um, so the midfield for me, if, if we're doing that, would be Henderson, um, Wijnaldum and Coutinho. Still pretty powerful in my opinion. And then your front three. 
You could switch some of the front three around. You could take someone out. You could put Oxlade Chamberlain up there somewhere. But I think if we got West Brom midweek next week, and then we've also got Bournemouth at the weekend, I think there's no reason why we couldn't start with that front three of Salah, Mane, and Firmino. And if things are looking pretty comfortable, then yeah, we could maybe bring someone off at half time. Or you could do it a little bit differently. You could put um, you could put Oxlade Chamberlain on, who didn't feature in the Champions League. Most likely he could feature anyway. And you maybe bring Sadio Mane out, who's still, obviously, he's still building up his fitness, but he's looking great, in my opinion. People saying he didn't have a very good match in the Champions League. He got he still got two goals. He still played quite well, in my opinion. Now, if we have the choice to, obviously, for me, Salah would definitely be in. I think he, you know, I'd love to see him in. It depends. Who do you rest? Would you rest Salah or would you rest Mane? I don't know. I would start Salah because I love seeing the guy play. I love seeing him play. I love every single minute he's on a pitch. I love it. It's fantastic. Everything that he does is pretty much just magic. He is a magic man. So I'd love to see him start. I don't know if that's the way that he'll do it. But for me, I'm going with Oxley chamberlain on the left. I'd say Salah on the right-hand side. Now, up front, it gets interesting. Who do you give the time to up front? Do you give it to Solanke or do you give it to Sturridge? Me, personally, I want to go with the guy that's up and coming. And I would go with Solanke. Other people, I understand, would go with Daniel Sturridge. And I can understand why they would. Obviously, his track record, his, his uh, time at the club, his length of time at the club that he's been here, what he's contributed. Obviously, you know, he has had his injuries and stuff like that as well. He can contribute with assists and stuff like he did to Mane the other night as well. But I think that Solanke will cause... Will cause could cause Everton a lot more problems than Sturridge can. Sturridge can cut quite a desperate, frustrated figure. And when he plays desperate, he doesn't flow with the rest of the team. Solanke is young enough to not let that bother him, in my opinion. And when, whenever Solanke's come onto the pitch, he's looked very, very good. He's looked dangerous. He's got a good turn, a good turn of pace. He's got good feet, good technique, a hell of a shot. He's a tall presence in that box as well. He's not a static presence, he's moving about, he's everywhere, he's trying his best to link play from that midfield, from the wingers, and everything like that as well. I think it could be prime for him to come in and play this game, and I'd love to see Solanke get the nod on this one. I personally believe if they're not going to go with Firmino, and they're going to maybe you know give him a bit of a rest, they will go with Sturridge, and I'll support that, that's absolutely fine. I would just prefer to see Solanke getting more of a shot, that is just my opinion. Now... We're going to be looking at score prediction. In my opinion, and I'm trying to take out the fact of form, how we performed in the Champions League and how Everton have performed in the recent couple of weeks, I think that Liverpool can win this game and I think they should win this game. The only reason I think that is because I think with the pace that we have on our wings, we should be able to get at their defence. Their defence has looked shaky, it hasn't looked very, you know, it doesn't look like they're protecting each other very well. Doesn't look like they're protecting their goalkeeper very well either. Which, you know, Pickford was a good goalkeeper last season, you know, and Sunderland still got relegated. It happened, but he was, he was a standout keeper, still a young keeper as well. Um, it looks like sometimes they create they creatively lapse, or they're lacking creatively, that's what I mean, I think. Now, if you go by midweek as well, just to take a little snippet of that as well, is Sam Allardyce going to look to bring some of those younger players through, like um, Adam Ola Luckman and people like that, pacey players, tricky players. Calvert-Lewin has already been in the team quite a lot, and he is a tricky player as well, played alongside Dominic Solanke in the Under-20s World Cup that they won. I think he's actually scored in the final. Um, so he's, again, he's an up and coming player that's a dangerous player as well. Look... On the basis of it, I think with our quality of players and the way that we can play and the way that if we get our forwards and everything clicking and cooking on gas early, we have the power to overrun this game. Where I think people are getting lost or where I think people are maybe getting a bit ahead of themselves is they're looking at the fact that we have scored 12 goals in the last two games. It's a Merseyside derby. The worst thing that can happen to Liverpool and Liverpool fans right now is us getting overconfident. That we should be smashing, we should be smashing Everton. We should be smashing them and taking them to the free, taking them outside and giving them a right good beating. It's a derby. It is a derby, and we have to make sure 
that you keep a level head. Yes, we're doing well right now. We have the opportunity right now to keep building and build on more points and more points as this Christmas period gets busier and busier. But we've also got to be realistic as well. Like Sometimes Liverpool, the football club, can be its own banana skin. And you can get a little bit overconfident and all it takes is one good performance from Everton. And I'm not saying that they'll do it because it's at Anfield, but the last thing that we would ever want is to lose to Everton. We we don't want that ever. I don't ever want to lose to Everton. Never. I don't want to draw with Everton. I really don't. I only ever want to win against Everton. It's all I ever want to do. Now, all I ever want to do is for, for my team to win and, and against anybody in the world, against anyone, especially against Everton. We have the ability to do this and we should be doing it. And I believe that we will get this game. I think that it will be a 3-1 victory to Liverpool at Anfield. Quarter past two on Sunday. I can't wait. It can't come quick enough. Probably by the time of the game, I'll be like, I, I, I want it to be over. Come on. But anyway, I really can't wait for this game. I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to wrap the video up here and I'm going to take some soothers. And I'm going to hopefully just rest this, boys. I hope you've enjoyed the video. Thanks for sticking with me through this one. I know it probably won't sound very good, but thanks for sticking through it anyway. I really do appreciate that from you. Um, do subscribe if you are new around here. That would be so much me there. That would be greatly appreciated. Like the video if you can. Get some comments. Get your thoughts in. Whether you're a neutral, whether you're a blue, or whether you're a red. Get them down in the comments below and let me know what you think. Thank you ever so much for watching. As always, and I'll catch you later. <laughs>